It's time to build the Roadster. The tech is ready, the plate is sufficiently clear, and they've got all the space they need, uh, probably. So the Roadster may be coming sooner than you think, and I'll tell you why. I'm Brian, welcome to my Tesla Weekend. A quick thanks to just a few of my new and upgrading patrons, Gort, Michael, David C. and David K. Since I don't do clickbait, this support is what literally keeps the channel going, and I thank you guys all so much for your decision to support the channel. So for ages, Tesla had too many products in the pipeline. But with semi-deliveries already underway and Cybertruck expected to enter production in a matter of months, that leaves just one major product without a timeline, and it's the Roadster, but all the pieces are kind of already in place. Unlike the Semi, which uses a whole new form factor, or the Cybertruck, which uses an entire new philosophy, the base model Roadster is as close to just a car as Tesla currently makes. Let's start with the sheet metal. Stamping body panels is easy. There's no new tech involved. Get the stamping dies, dial them in, and away you go. New stamping machines have been added in Texas over the last year, with more still being added regularly. Now, these could all be for the Model Y and a, a few components of the upcoming Cybertruck, but they could also be used for products that are new, like the Roadster. So let's talk about the front and back. Well, depending on the volume they're targeting, they could use front and rear castings like on the Model Y, or just front castings, or just rear castings, or they could just use sheet metal like the Models S and X. There's already a bunch of Giga Presses in Austin, uh, so it wouldn't be crazy to think that they could just assign one or two of them to the Roadster if the volume is high enough to justify it. So that's all the major elements in place, waiting on, well, I guess the battery pack. Maybe they would wait to use 4680s like we suspected the Plaid's models S and X would, uh, but at lower volumes, there's no reason to wait. The 18650s using the Plaid pack one hell of a punch, and with the lighter curb weight on the Roadster, it would be likely to offer significantly better performance in a straight line, as well as better performance around the track. So yeah, the pieces are all there. They can build it today. Sure, there have been suggestions about cold gas thrusters to add unprecedented levels of performance, the starting, the stopping, the turning, but these don't need to be on the launch edition and may prove tricky in terms of engineering and regulatory approval. So barring design creep that adds features no production car before it has ever had, it's ready to go. The engineering team will have the bandwidth to handle it very soon. The battery technology is already adequate to make it a beast. The tech to put it together is well within Tesla's wheelhouse. And the financials make sense. Or do they? They do. So let's check out the spreadsheet and take a peek at the math. Of course, the more they built, the lower the cost will be. At 250000 the demand may run out pretty quickly, but at 200000 it will increase, and at 150000 it would be substantially higher still. The base model Roadster will cost less to build than the Plaid Model S, since it uses a lot of the same technology and components, but with fewer atoms, less metal, fewer doors, in a generally smaller package. The simplification of the back seating area alone, reducing it to essentially a cargo hold, will introduce significant savings. So what kind of numbers are we actually looking at? Well, this requires a lot of assumptions. So for the sake of this exercise, let's start with a manufacturing cost of 90000 and drop it by a bit if volumes reach significantly higher levels. Unlikely levels, but still. So I suspect the minimum target volume is 1000 a week, with a maximum price of 250000 with a $90,000 build cost. Now, that's a really fat $160,000 margin. Typical supercars cost hundreds of thousands because they're hand-built in very low volume, without the benefit of economies of scale. Well, Tesla will absolutely build the Roadster on an assembly line. So the $90,000 build strikes me as reasonable based on what we know of the costs of the Plaid models S and X. 
If they were to ramp from 1,000 to 2,000 a week, cost could drop on the back end by 5,000, and a corresponding reduction in the retail cost would be necessary to maintain demand. So at 200,000, an $85,000 build cost, there'd still be 115,000 in margin. The highest production I can see the worldwide market absorbing would be about 3,000 a week, but only if the cost comes down to something like 150,000. That would still leave about 70,000 in margin. The Mercedes S class sells around 2,000 a week globally in a class with significant competition, so to think over 2,000 for a car like this isn't crazy. So do the financials make sense? Selling 1,000 a week would result in 3.6 to 8.3 billion in profit. That's a lot. That makes sense. Selling two to 3,000 a week, even at significantly lower costs, could still result in seven to 11 billion dollars in profit. Surely these numbers are insane, right? They can't possibly build a $200,000 car for less than a hundred grand, can they? Well, the wheels, tires, and brakes are the only components that are likely to cost more than they would on a Plaid Model S or X, and not necessarily by much. With everything else having the same cost or less, there are a lot of daily drivers sold around the world for prices over 150000 once you tack on all the options. And a base model, a launch edition Roadster, wouldn't have many options available. Once you get into supercars and the buyers who collect them, cost is less of an obstacle to having the latest, greatest, quickest, and most exciting racer out there. There are people who will buy them just to garage them, but there are even more people who wouldn't, who would buy them to drive them. Some of the world's 25,000 plus people with over a hundred million dollars will want one just to collect it. But a lot of buyers looking for a hundred thousand dollar car are likely to stretch to get their hands on something like this if it's only 50% more and it's that much more practical with a longer lifespan. And unlike Ferrari and Lamborghini, it doesn't have $5,000 oil changes. It doesn't have oil changes. So what did I miss or misunderstand? Leave me all your comments, your thoughts, your wisdom, your juicy blind and brilliance uh, down below. And of course, stay tuned, stay juicy. And I can't wait to hear from you clever robots on the flippity flop or perhaps in Texas where I am hosting an event, a pregame event for Investor Day. It's going to be so much fun. We've got drone pilots. We've got panels. We've got discussions. Ellie in Space will be there hosting at least a panel or two. She is wonderful. Uh, the drone pilots, we've got some of them, but not all and others. YouTubers, you'll see. It's going to be fun. There'll be door prizes, there'll be pizza, tickets in the description, all that. And the tickets are free. If you want to help out, you can get in touch with me on Twitter, at 4K Podcast, to volunteer or contribute. Uh, we are accepting. We do have some tickets available that are for sale. Uh, they don't give you anything extra. They just support the event, help offset the cost of the pizza and whatnot. Completely optional. Completely optional. We just appreciate it. Not necessary just helpful. So there it is, and there you go. What'd you think? what I get wrong? Let me know.